Welcome to It Matters Radio, music guest interviews. And of course, joining me is Carrie Hall. Hello, everybody. And Welcome. Carrie handles all our music guests, and uh, she finds great talent. And Thank you. I know she's going to have somebody great this evening that's joining us. Oh, absolutely, Monica. She's a beautiful young lady. Her name is Sherry Rowe. She is a country singer. Uh, she sings country, bluegrass, and classic country all rolled into one. And she's just a delight. And I can't wait for us to start the interview. I know. It's going to be great. I just want to remind everybody that we are here at, at Sundays. We have switched, and we're on Vaughn Live TV. And you can watch us on Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. And then at 7 p.m., we have a spoken word program, which spoken word can be anybody. I mean, it can be uh, an organization, an author, uh, someone of interest, someone that has a great topic. But we always will be bringing you music and music guests at our 3 p.m. show. So I hope you can join us each week and share it with others. And when we're uh, through with the interviews, we also will have them available for those of you who miss anything on our music guest interviews on YouTube. So just go to It Matters Radio, look for the playlist, music guest interviews, and you'll find them there in case you missed any of them. Okay, Carrie, I think we're about right. ready to meet Miss Sherry Rowe. Here, here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to It Matters Radio. We have a delightful guest uh, tonight. Uh, her name is Sherry Rowe. Um, just want to say welcome to the program. We're so honored to have you. Uh, oh, thank we just you. thank you for having me on. That you're, you you have a great voice. Um, I have one question. Actually, it's a combination of three. There's rock music, country rock. There's bluegrass. And then there's, uh, you know, regular classic country. Talk a little bit about bluegrass because that is a good influence in your music. It is. I, I love bluegrass instrumentation. Even in uh, modern pop country, I, I like to hang on to that element every time I go on to record. Um, I'm a big fan of Alison Krauss and Union Station. And uh, uh, if you listen to some of the modern country music, there, there definitely is a bluegrass influence. Um, Dirk Bentley released a project, I think, just before this last one, Up on the Ridge. Um, just that mandolin, banjo, those mm. harpies, the dynamic. Um, there's just a certain heart to bluegrass uh, that I, I want to hang on to, even as I, um, you know, delve into more of the uh, modern pop country. I don't want to lose that. Right. So what exactly is bluegrass for us that are kind of not, uh, you know, what's the word cognizant of it? How do you describe bluegrass music? Uh, to me, bluegrass music is very, um, uh, it holds on to a lot of the gospel elements, um, uh, practically speaking, uh, as far as content-wise. Um, but stylistically, I think it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's salt of the earth when it comes to country. I just feel like it, um, you know, those, those basic instruments of banjo, mandolin, just that, that heart, um, that acoustic kind of sound. And then... Harmonies are such a strong element in bluegrass music, and I, I grew up singing harmonies with my family. So um, that, it just reaches a certain part of my heart. Um, and really, for me, that's what bluegrass is. It's the harmonies, the dynamic, and the instrumentation. Well, it's fabulous. You, you can definitely get that influence in your music. So um, you come from a nice country family, which I think is wonderful. Growing up in Arizona, talk a little bit about that because you, you did some very outdoorsy type things. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's fun for me to be able to share about Arizona. I love it. And I think uh, for those who aren't real familiar with it, they kind of picture just this big desert, you know, which we do have. I mean, we have some <laughs> yeah. beautiful desert. It's very unique. Um, you know, the saguaro cactus and uh, just the tumbleweeds. I mean, all that stuff that you would imagine in the Wild West. But we have some of the most beautiful uh, mountain country. Uh, yes. And, um, I grew up, of course, you know, riding horses and just being outdoors quite a bit. Come from a family that loves to camp and fish and hike. And um, gosh, 
I remember many summer days just taking off on the horse, even in town here and following the Salt River bed, um, and just really just being around animals and, and in the outdoors for sure. So, what, what part of Arizona? I'm right just outside of the metro Phoenix area in a town called Glendale, just in the Northwest Valley, um, which even in town, there's still a big influence um, of just being outdoors, even though, like right now, it's horribly hot outside. I mean, yeah. it's everything you hear about, you know, the Arizona heat is happening right now. I mean, it's yeah. the worst of the worst. But, you know, nine months out of the year, it's beautiful. So, um in town here, we do a lot of that, uh, you know, getting outside, and um, there are there are real cowboys still here in Arizona, and a lot of ranchers, and um, a lot of horse folk, as we say. Um, yeah, so I love it here. Well, you know, Ken, our, our spoken word host, um, he lives in Arizona, and he's always telling us, you need to come out here. You need to live here. <laughs> you need to at least come and check it out. It's yeah. just uh, it's, its own thing. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's beautiful. beautiful country, number one. I mean, uh, you, you, you do have your deserts, but, you know, I, like yeah. I've seen pictures of just sculpted mountains from the wind. Oh. So what's the sunset, what's the sun rise and sunset like in Arizona oh. for you? You know, I, one thing when we travel, um, one thing I notice about so many other places, they don't have the big sky that Arizona has. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I mean, there's, it's just this, vast expanse. You look, you look around and you can see for miles because we're in a valley, but we're surrounded by these mountain ranges. So when I look to the west, I think Arizona, I, I have yet to been in a place that beats the Arizona sunsets. I mean, just so many colors and then the, the, the way the sun reflects on the mountain, they, they look almost purple and pink and oh. it's just, it's just a gorgeous backdrop. Beautiful. Well, I'm the city gal. I come from California and San Francisco, San Jose, and what you see is basically gray smog. So it's always <laughs> like Monica, Monica yes. knows. Yeah. Uh, we, we were in a valley too, but it was covered with smog. <laughs> well, we, yeah, so, get our, we do get our share of that, uh, especially in the winter months, because we are basically a valley, so it's sort of a bowl. So you can understand yeah. that, you know. We do have a big city here as well. So we do have our share of that, but um, thankfully we can get, get get up out of it at higher elevation. That's right. Wow. So you have a wonderful band uh, together. I mean, amazing music. Um, there's a, a row in that in that uh, group. Who is who is that? That would be my sweet husband, Kevin Rowe. Aw, yeah. all right. Yeah, bass and, uh, in the band and just is, a, is an exceptional musician in his own right. And uh, really just, um, we're, we are so blessed and happy to be able to do this together, uh, tour together and manage it together. And uh, he's just, he's my messy heart. Wow. Well, that's wonderful. So, Lamon is it L A M O N Records? When did you hook up with Ben and Lamon for you? Yeah, it, it, it's Lamon Records, and it's out of Nashville. Um, we I signed with them in 2014, and it's been a great experience. I produced the uh, video for Moonshine, which was the first single released through Lamon. Um, that was a great time. And they're so talented. They own a film company as well. The family. It's a family independent record label, but they've been around since the 70s and yeah. very successful and um, very talented. That's been great. I mean, they have really helped me to grow my face and to reach radio and, um, you know, all the things you would you would want as an artist uh, working in the industry just to be able to reach more people with your music. So. Wow. so you won an independent music award in 2013. Talk a little bit about that and how, how exciting was that for you? That actually, it's it's funny because that was probably one of the most exciting moments for me was winning that award because it was very unexpected. Um, the song uh, that won was titled Silly Boy. I co-wrote that with a good friend of mine here in town, Josh Foster. Uh, and, you know, it was an independent project. I wasn't signed with Lamont at, at that time. Um, and really, that song still to this day when we do it live, it just... Um, it gets a really good reaction from the crowd. Uh, that's that was one of those surprises, those happy surprises, and it really did um, enlarge my platform and my reach, winning the award. So I was very grateful for that. That was a it was a great step for me. Now, are you currently touring? And uh, why don't you let uh, the folks know in your town and others uh, where you're going to be performing? 
Yes. Oh, gosh. We're, we've been playing so many shows. We just got back. Well, I'll give you a little backstory story because I had said, sure. yeah, I have just a, a few days here to rest before things amp up again. But um, we did a tour in Poland and Germany in May. Um, we played about 12 shows in 10 days. And then we uh, came back here to Arizona for just a few days and then drove out to Tennessee for CMA Fest. And we did a radio tour on the way there and on the way back. Um, played about 10 shows for the four days of CMA Fest. Uh, came back here again in Arizona for a little bit and then went back just about 10 days ago to record some new music in Nashville. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, we've been uh, real busy. So we're going to have a new single coming out at the end of summer. Right. And yeah, and here we're, we're getting ready actually to play Saturday night here in Arizona at Tempe Marketplace. Um, okay. We'll have a whole night of music um, there. And then we've got some big festivals coming up here in town. And then, of course, more will open up once the uh, single is released. There'll be some more out-of-town stuff. But we've got a full schedule right here in my hometown, at least for the next few months. So Wow, you're going to be very busy, Miss Sherry. My goodness. Yes, so, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but it'll be it'll be wonderful. Um, so there are a lot of neat venues in Nashville. Do you have a favorite outdoor or indoor venue that you oh, really man. like to play? You know, during CMA Fest, one of the place our favorite places, the one of the best shows I think that we had was at a uh, club called Big Shots. Um, Big Shots Nashville, just right down um, right downtown, not on Broadway, but just off Broadway. Um, great crowd. Um, Great uh, people at the at the venue. Um, I think that was one of my favorite shows during CMA Fest. So that's that's right up there. And we played uh, Tin Roof, which is a, a great venue as well. Um, there, was, gosh, that's just a music town. So it's uh, right. it's hard to pick one because unlike Arizona, um, Nashville is a place where you can just anytime any time of the year. I mean, you can find live music and. So many great players and so many great clubs. So, Wow. So you yeah. have a CD out. Why don't you talk a little bit about the CD that is? Okay, out. yeah. Well, this is the one that I released with Lamont. Here, I'll show everybody who's watching. Moonshine. I love and, the name. Love <laughs> it. great. Yeah. Good it stuff, was, too. Okay. It was really, yeah. Well, I had um, Old Smokey sent me some moonshine when the single came out. Um, <laughs> kind of a sampler. That we took camping with us, so that was kind of fun. My favorite was the apple pie moonshine, which you got to be careful because it tastes real good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. Working on this project was so much fun. I, um, I had been writing on my own, and I co-wrote uh, with some friends of mine here in town and then some guys out in Nashville as well. And uh, when I built my relationship with Lamont and we were talking about what songs to put on the EP, we... Gosh, when you're when you're working towards recording, you just go through so many songs before mm -hmm. you decide what's going to end up on the project. And Moonshine ended up being the, which is the title cut, ended up being the first single that was released uh, in the spring of 2015. And that one was fun. I co-wrote with, uh, uh, gosh, two guys out of Nashville. We actually did it over Skype, like we're doing right now. Oh, and nice. yeah, it was kind of fun. And when I started writing the song. I was thinking, you know, gosh, there's so many songs out now in country music, and, you know, they're fun, and they're about partying, and they're about drinking, and it's great. Like, we all know how to have a good time. And I was thinking, you know, what is, what is my biggest high? What is my biggest rush? And really, being outside and camping, there's a certain space where uh, my husband and I have been camping for several years now. It's our favorite spot up in the White Mountains. And when I'm there, I mean, I've traveled all over, but when we're there together, that is, that's like my place. I just love those woods. I love those little logging roads. I love the wildlife. Um, so really the song ended up being kind of a play on words. And it says, uh, I know you got a stash in a mason jar, but I'd rather get a buzz from shooting stars. And it's really about uh -huh. being in that place that you love the most with someone that you love and how really there's no better high than that. So, that's an so that was, yeah. Yeah. So is, uh, uh, out of the CD and EPs, what are what is your favorite song? Because I love Moonshine. Moonshine is wonderful. <laughs> I, I just love fun. that song. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's, it's really fun to do live, too. I mean, the guys kind of take off and play for it. It ends up being just this great jam session at the end. And 
it's a lot of fun to play live. Um, I think though, if gosh, there's different reasons why different songs are my favorite, but Family Gathering is also on this project. And I come from a big family, and they're very special to me. Do you? Yeah. And I, um, I started writing that song kind of talking about the quirks and kind of the craziness that comes with any large community, whether it's a family, oh, yeah. group of friends. I mean, anytime you get a bunch of people together and really learning about one another and involved in each other's lives, I mean, you start to really show who you really are, and that comes with all our quirks and our troubles and, you know, all of that. And I kind of started writing about, you know, I show up at this family gathering, and I'm always the one to bring the potato salad. So that's the first line in the song, show up with potato salad. <laughs> and I kind of survey the room, and I kind of take in everybody that's there. And sometimes when we're, we're heading towards those family gatherings, there's a lot of, sometimes there can be baggage, you know, and you're coming into this get-together, and you're a little nervous about maybe you're going to run into so-and-so. Or, you know, I mean, we all have our scenarios in our head of right. how it's full. And so I started sort of tongue-in-cheek joking around, around about some of those quirks. And as the writing progressed, um, I, really, I really started getting choked up. And I started feeling like, wow, these people have seen me at my worst. And I've seen them at their worst. And if we are um, blessed to have any kind of community like that, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what, our, what quirks we have, what we've gone through. Um, if we can say that we have those people in our corner, then, I mean, that's, that's just such a huge blessing. So the song ended up being about just not taking that for granted. So I, th I would say my favorite. So uh, when, how many people uh, get together at your family gatherings? I'm just curious. Uh, when everyone's there, well, like I, I shouldn't say everyone. If everyone were there, it would be a lot more than this. But in town here, usually about 20, 25 people. Good amount. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we all did sleep over at my brother's house for Christmas Eve, and we, we had a talent show, and then we had a big dance party at midnight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, but I, I have 24. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, you know what it's like. <laughs> right. Monica, did you have some questions you'd like to ask? Um, yeah, actually. Um, Sherry, now you write some of the music you said, and some of the other. Um, what I really, really love about your music, and I think this is something that um, all the listeners and viewers really have to look at, is you are playing real instruments. Yeah. You are playing mm -hmm. real vocals. There's not anybody going into the studio and you know, fix, fixing the sound that uh, someone made on a uh, guitar or, or your voice. It's, you know, pure vocals and pure instruments. And that's something that's quite unique in this day and age. Well, you know, in the studio, I mean, we all have, you know, um, gosh, the players that we use, because we use different players depending on, you know, what we're tracking and, you know, where we're tracking and, um, and live, I mean, I'm just so grateful for my guys and my band. I mean, they, they do their homework. Um, you know, they, they put the time in. Yes. We all put our time in. And um, I think where it really shows is the live performance. And we do, we're, not running, we're not running tracks or stems, as they call them. And, um, you know, we try to, even if we can't completely recreate something that was recorded in the studio, our goal with our live shows is just to put on a good show, all even right. if it means even if it means it's a scaled back show and we're doing just an acoustic set, you know, it, our goal is to really just bring that live performance and have it be a true and sincere uh, musical performance. Exactly. So. Because I was just going to say that, that there's a lot of people that don't realize that they're going to concerts and they are playing tracks. They're yeah. Not, they're, people yeah. aren't really singing. And I, I, I know that you guys are the real deal and it's hard to find. And that's true talent. And Thank I, you. I think Appreciate people it. should follow that. <laughs> you know? well, and I think it also depends on the genre too. You know, I think um, there are some, you know, as, when it comes to pop um, and dance music, and I mean, I think I think tracks in some in certain cases, you know, when people are flying stuff in, I think there's an experience that the concert goer is looking for, and I think in those instances, 
I think it's it's suitable and it makes the it's it's what the concert goer is expecting. Um, I think in country music, I, you know, the, there are some people who are using them, and you know, I'm not you know to each his own when it comes right. to that. But I do believe that of all the genres, country music, in my opinion, should be the one where we're representing the music in the purest form and and truly. Yes. Truly using our talents. I do believe that, yeah. Right, and to tell you the truth, when I go to a concert, I want to hear them playing then. I want to hear them singing then. And maybe because I grew up in a, a, you know, the generations where that's what happened. And right. They didn't sound just like their record all the time, but it was right. great because sometimes they did new things. Yeah, and, yeah. And it was fantastic. Yeah, and, I appreciate that aspect as well. I'm right with you on that, yeah. And, uh, because if I wanted to hear, you know, people just playing tracks or, or, or lip singing or something, <laughs> like I would just buy the record. You know? right. <laughs> yep. But I wanted yep. to bring it up to point out uh -huh. to people that you're the real deal. And that's, you don't see that that much, especially in the States, you know. Well, I appreciate and that. Now, Thank and you. You, you're, you toured out of the States. Now, I've been hearing that a lot of the fans that are not in the United States, yeah. Uh, not that the, the fans in the States are bad or anything, but uh -huh. I, I hear that they, if they love you, they love you and they're going to oh, beg you to come back and back and back. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, we have, tr we have had that experience. Uh, our fans in Poland and Germany are just, uh, they are, they are absolutely like, as you're describing true blue fans yes. and, um, they, tr I mean, gosh, the hospitality and, um, so kind and so um, complimentary and it's interesting because the towns we played in in Poland they're not really familiar with country music they don't even know some of the biggest names here in the states right it's, it's really fun because we're kind of introducing a genre and they love it and so it, it was it was kind of cool because I had a translator of course for you know when I was speaking in between the songs and yes. um, I would explain what's what the songs were about and um, even with the the language barrier um, coming away, so many people said they they're they're learning about country music and they love it because it's about real life. And so I did my best to share in between the songs to talk about things that are completely relatable. You know, everyday life, outdoors, family, food. You know, just uh, making memories and. Right. Those those are universal things, and I think that's one of the most beautiful things about country music is its relatability. Now, I, I had something I wanted to ask, and I know this might be difficult because you have toured so much and you have so many fans, mm -hmm. but was there ever something that sticks out in your mind, one moment or one person or, or one occurrence that happened that you'll never forget? Oh, man. You know... <laughs> It's hard to narrow it down to one, yes. but um, I have uh, I have a, a hashtag when I post pictures with fans after shows, and it's little fans are the best fans, <laughs> and it's pictures with you know because like kids will come up, and you know there's the these young girls will come up and they're like you know eight nine ten you know years old and they're just. Um, I remember being that little girl and at that age, you know, we're so impressionable and yes. so and like I look at those opportunities as a chance to I, I in that moment I'm just like I'm secretly praying in my heart. I'm like give me the right words to make an impact yes. in this whole person's life, you know, because they're looking at you so starry eyed and um, you know that, that in that moment there's that you know, that fame aspect, because in, in a child's eyes, you know, that moment, it's huge to them, oh, you know, yes. they don't, you know, they're coming to the table, they're meeting you, you're signing a picture for them, and, and um, I just really believe in making the most of every opportunity to have purpose behind what I'm doing, yes. so I think the kids always get me the most, and, and uh, even my, my merchandise people will tell me, they'll say, They'll tell everybody, keep Sherry away from the merch table when the kids come because she'll give everything away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. That's a wonderful so thing. So much. I think yeah. the moments with the kids mean the most to me. Have you met Punky, our cat? Punky I is one of our co-hosts. <laughs> what is her name? P Punky. Punky. Yeah. Oh, she loves, oh, loves, loves music. I don't know why, 
but uh, she, she adores it. But every time we, we do an interview or, or anything, I don't care, we just play music, she has to have her face plastered oh. here. <laughs> She's a diva cat. Yeah. Actually, I think animals, animals are drawn to music. And we have, um, yes. over the years, just even when we've had rehearsals, you know, in the living room at our house over the years, we had uh, one of our dogs at least just kind of plop down right in the middle, right next to the drum kit and everything, uh -huh. and all the chaos literally just like be right in the middle of it all. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's great. <laughs> so you have dogs. Uh, what are, you have how many dogs and cats? Or I have anything? two dogs and Ooh. we have two cats in the house. We have a brand new kitty running around here and um, to my daughter. So um, yeah, I wish she were right here. Her name's Tato, Potato. Um, so yeah, we call her all kinds of different variations of Potato. So <laughs> Tato cake, hash brown, a tater tot. You know, <laughs> how old is she? How old is she? Oh daughter? gosh, how old is she now? She can't be more than uh, she's about eight weeks old. She's a little tiny thing, but she's doing. Oh, I love yeah, her. She, she was a baby, and um, so we rescued her. And then we have um, we have uh, Maverick, who is a blue tick coon hound mix, and so oh, and he's another rescue. And then we have Lady, who is also a rescue, and she is seventeen years old. Wow. So. And she's she's hanging in there, but she's getting older. Um, and then we've got baby kitty. She's pure white kitty, and she just showed up on our step one day, and um, she just made friends with Maverick right away, the big big dog. And like she just doesn't take anything from anyone. Yet she's just a big mush <laughs> full of love. So she's a yeah. Mush. <laughs> I love See, it. I, I always know people's character by how they relate to animals you know and I, see you've got a wonderful character <laughs> yeah i can't imagine not having not having animals pets around it's just that that would not be like uh, yeah no. no you have to have at least one <laughs> i want to so let where you, can we go ahead Mark. i want to let you know speaking of punky real fast um punky sends out a newsletter uh once a month so you might tell Anna or anyone that when you're ready to, um, you know, have a new release or go on yeah. tour or anything she'd like us to share, mm -hmm. to just drop us a line. And uh, oh, be it's a little newsletter. It's called From the Litter Box. I think I saw that <laughs> on your website. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, I just like to remind people to please do that because we want to help everyone and get Thanks. word out and, and we adore our guests and i know oh. you, you take up much time just to be here with us so anything oh, we can do to assist or support you you know i appreciate it. For it okay carrie i'm sorry that's absolutely right so well, where can we find your wonderful music sherry where can people purchase it i know you're on facebook where else can we find yeah. you um itunes amazon uh you know all the normal sites online um sherryrow.com if uh, people go to the website they can request a physical copy to be sent to them um, i think you can also do that on amazon but um yeah all the all the normal sites where you just put sherry row in there and i think they'll find it and it's s-h-a-r-i-r-o-w-e yeah thank you you're yeah. welcome just want to make sure because uh you know, there's so many different ways of spelling names nowadays. <laughs> true, it's true. And and um, the social media sites, we are having so much fun, um, you know, doing Facebook Live and uh, Instagram yes. and Twitter and all that. And we've had some really cool things come up, meeting different people in Nashville. And I always like to share that with the fans. So I'd well, love to good. connect there, too. Well, good. I hope they, they check your website out and follow you on Facebook and absolutely purchase the music. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, you know, sure. It's, I think it's about time that we're going to play some music of yours. So, nice. I just wanted to thank you so much for taking time to join us today and um, keep in touch. Let us know what's going on. And you're just wonderful. Your music's fantastic. And anybody who likes country or doesn't like country is going to. Fall in love with Sherry's Are music. You? Yeah, I, I can guarantee you. <laughs> uh, Carrie, Monica, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. It helps me as an artist too. So 
thank you for the support. Thanks for playing the music, and thanks for the time here this evening. It's been great. Okay, thank Sherry, you. take care. Take care, Sherry. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 
young lady and Monica you know you we, we were talking to her she's got dogs and cats and all kinds of neat animals there at her place it's amazing yeah. and how about that music we just heard oh the music is fabulous and and uh, she is such an, a beautiful singer and uh, we were talking in the interview at how pure her sound is and how original yeah. um, her music is it's fabulous yeah, I think it's it's something that people really, really enjoy. And uh, I just wanted to, before we uh, close for this evening, is to remind everybody that when we have guests on the show, we would love for you to share the show with others so that they can also take a look at the music and the guest and enjoy it. And Carrie, I know you always say this also, if you like anyone that you meet here and you think, man, I really love that music, I like the person, do them a big favor and go to their website, follow them on Facebook, Twitter, and you know, uh, share their information with other people because that's what it takes nowadays, and I hope they'll do that. So, um, Carrie, now, can you tell people a little bit about the uh, shows that we have during the week? Uh, we have a really great Euro indie music show, Vitek Tape, six days a week, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. Is that correct, Monica? Yes, that's right. I always right. get the time speed up. Now, what's really nice about these folks is that you can vote during the week for your favorite song. And we will post the, uh, the site where you can go to to, uh, to make your vote. And then on Fridays, we play the top 20 from the week before, and it's amazing music. I we really would hope that you'll join us, spread the word about our Euro Indie show. And then on Sundays, we come back for, like Monica mentioned, our Music Cafe version, which is at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday. We always have really interesting guests, great music. Yeah. And then again, at 7 p.m. Eastern, we have spoken word with our host, Kenneth Ween. Yeah, I'm, so come on down, folks. And I want to tell everybody something. Um, one of the guests that Ken's going to be having on this show, not this, uh, not tonight at 7 p.m., but next week at 7 p.m., is someone by the name of Chris DeFresne. Right. Now, I don't know if any of you recognize that name or not, but he's actually the son of the very internationally well-known psychic Sylvia Brown. And uh, she had two sons. One son didn't have any inclination at all about being psychic. He didn't, you know, but the other one was born into it, just like Sylvia was. And what we'd like you to do is join us on Skype when we do the interview and that's going to be on Wednesday which is oh gosh what is that the um 27th is that correct um it, it's the Wednesday that's coming up oh I'm sorry is what I should say yeah right. so um I want to say the 20 20th I believe is what it is anyway 
but check your calendar. It's, it's this coming Wednesday. We're going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern time speaking with him here on Skype. And he would love, love, love for you to join us so that you could ask him questions. Now, if you can't make it, go to It Matters Radio on Facebook and let us know what question you want us to ask him. But you're going to have to do that prior to, to Wednesday the 20th. So I'm looking really forward to that. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's a great opportunity to anybody who might have a question or so. <laughs> so I wanted to get that in and let everybody know. This is okay. going to be exciting, talking to Chris. I think it's going to be fabulous. Yeah, it is. So I hope many people will get their questions in. Or, gosh, please come here and call. You don't have to be on video with us. You can just call <laughs> and uh, from your telephone and just so he can hear your voice. You know, because they, they do need to get a sense of who the person is that's on the other end, whether it be they're looking at them on video or whether they're speaking with them over the telephone. So be sure and do that. And um, we'll have the information on our Facebook page also, It Matters Radio, on Facebook. So take a look there. And with that, Carrie, I thank you so much again for bringing us such wonderful talent. And Punky, who is all over my keyboard right now. <laughs> yep. And I, as well as Carrie, are going to bid you a good night. Bye-bye, all. Bye-bye. Thanks. <laughs>